just finish the explanation on 9.3 um, so that you're ready to do that, and then uh, we should be able to correct um, 9.2. So we started off this section, we talked about inverse functions, and we graphed some fairly simple functions, one that we were familiar with, one maybe not so familiar with. We looked at what their graphs look like, how we find their inverses, we graphed them, and then we looked at these corresponding points, like if this is an xy pair on the original function, 2 comma 8, then on the inverse there must be a point 8 comma 2, because we just switched the x's and y's, domains and range switches, things like that. Um, if you take a look at this, we wrote down the function notation for this. So again, let me emphasize this, please don't screw this up. Don't look at this and think that that's an exponent. Whenever we use a negative one up here, okay, we call it superscript, okay, and it's over a function, it means the inverse of that function. It does the opposite of what the original function did. Okay, So if this is the cube root function, the inverse of that cubes it. Okay, And then we went through and we did some exponential expressions where we looked at, well, guys, we're pretty familiar with how to get the answer for these. What about if we're missing the exponent, okay? And then we talked about how if we are missing the exponent, we've got to have a tool to work with that sort of thing. So if the variable's up on the exponent, we've got to have a way to get it down. Or what it comes down to is if I've got an exponential, and what's the name of this exponential? Exponential base b, then its inverse would be log base b, okay? And we talked about how we can rewrite uh, exponentials as logarithms. And I said, if you keep in mind these couple of things, it makes logarithms a heck of a lot easier to work with and understand. And that is that all logarithms are just another way of writing an exponential expression. We take these three components here, and we just put them in a different place. Yeah, we've got these extra three letters floating around here that say log and stuff like that. Okay, But we're basically just rewriting an exponential. And the most important part here is... The answer to a logarithm is an exponent. It's the power. It's the exponent that we put on the base to make the number that we want. Okay? So then we went through and we said, you know, you've got to be good at writing things in exponential form and logarithmic form. So we worked on changing back and forth. Okay? And sometimes you can look at it and you can tell exactly, you know, that definitely that is written correctly and that sort of thing. Then we went through and we evaluated some logarithms. And we said logarithms are basically just asking a question. Like this one right here, it's asking this. 2 to what power? 2 to what exponent gives us an 8? And we came up with a 3. We went through and did some that were easy, some that were hard. And then we did this. We graphed exponential base 2. Looks like this. We're familiar with that. That's exponential growth. We've got those five, uh, three key points. We've got the domain and the range, and we've got this horizontal asymptote here. And then we figured out what the inverse of what that exponential would be. And the inverse of that turned out to be log base 2, okay? And then we graphed log base 2 over here. And you'll notice that on this graph, each thing that has to deal with an x got switched with its equivalent y. So on that graph, we've got this point 1, 2 on the logarithm base 2. We've got 2, 1. Over here, we've got negative 1, 1 half. Here, we've got 1 half, negative 1. Here we've got a domain from negative infinity to infinity that gets switched, and it's now the range for the logarithm would be negative infinity to infinity. Okay? We also pointed this out. Here was our horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. We switched that. It's no longer horizontal. It's vertical, and it would be x equals 0. Okay? And that's where we left off. Okay? Are there any questions? Okay. Then let's look at the next page then, because this kind of brings this all together. Every function makes a shape, and we learned what shape this makes uh, earlier this week. We called that exponential base A. We can fill in all of this information. These shouldn't be any surprises. The reason we graphed these three key points is this is where the, what did we call it? This is where the bend happens. This is where the most curve happens, okay? The base has to be a positive number other than 1. We defined when it was exponential growth and whether it's when it's decay. Talked about the domain and range and what the horizontal asymptote would be. Now, we're going to take this information, and we're just going to basically flip all the x information for y information because now we're going to graph its inverse. If this is exponential base A, this is called what? This would be called log base A. You'll notice that I've taken each one of these points, and all we did here is we took the key points here, and we just switched the x's for y's. So we can fill in negative 1, 0, and 1. This would be a 1. This is 1 over a, and this is a. 
Again, you've got to have a base that's a positive number other than 1. We usually deal with positive numbers that are bigger than 1. Okay? The reason we graph those again are that is where the bend will happen on the logarithm graph. And the domain is going to be, well, let's see. If I know the domain and the range for an exponential, and I know that this is just the inverse, I just, what do I do? Just switch them, right? Okay. So the domain is going to be? Zero to infinity, range, <coughs> negative infinity to infinity. And instead of a horizontal asymptote, I've got a vertical asymptote. And instead of y equals zero, it's x equals zero. See how, they, how all the x stuff got switched for y stuff? Okay. Any questions? Sure? Okay. Now, um, I think I do this on one. Yeah, let's see. Yep, I only do this on one of them. Okay, this is just to illustrate the point. This is just to get the idea across. We don't have to graph an exponential every single time. I'm going to do this one in black, and then I'm going to do the other one in red. This is exponential base 3. It's going to go through 1 third, 1. It's going to go through 0, 1, and 1, 3, right? Those are the three key points. That's where the bend happens. I'm going to draw the asymptote in here. That helps me get a nice sketch to this. So here's the asymptote of y equals 0. There's our horizontal asymptote. And again, this is exponential. Just abbreviate that, EXP. Exponential base 3. Okay, now we're going to graph the logarithm. I'm going to do the three points... And instead of like we memorized for an exponential, I'm not going to put the negative 1, the 0, and the 1 here. I'm going to do negative 1, 0, and 1. What goes right here? A 1. What goes here? The reciprocal of the base. The base is 3, so this is going to be 1 third. This is going to be 3. So let's graph these points, and then let's also graph the, or me, the vertical asymptote. So I've got careful with this. This is one-third, negative one. So about right there, negative one. One, zero, and then three, one. So it looks like this. Look, you can see where the bend happens. Here's where the vertical asymptote is. X equals zero is our vertical asymptote. So the graph looks something like this. Again, draw that line, or draw that curve, put arrows on the end, because it does extend forever in those directions continues going up and out, and it continues to going down, getting closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, but it never actually touches it. And then we'd want to label these points, so 3, 1, 1, 0. This point right here would be 1 third, negative 1. And then we want to name this. What is the name of this function? Log base 3. Okay, are there any questions? That's it. On the first one, would it be Oh it, is, oh, it is. Yeah, sorry. You're right. I was getting ahead. Negative one, one third. Sorry about that. Didn't even get the sign right, did I? Good. Anything else? Yeah. Well, just a question. For our homework, do you want us to make sure we label the points? I would, okay? Because um, when you graph this, um, we're going to be doing uh, translations and transformations of these graphs. So when you start moving these around, labeling the points makes sure that, you know, you get across that you actually know what you're doing. It also helps to draw a better graph, especially drawing in that asymptote before you sketch the rest of the function. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, so here's the point of uh, this, most of this discussion, and that is this. Logs and exponentials are the, of the same base are inverses of each other. So if I take a look at this graph right here, I've got the point 1, 3. Here I've got 3, 1. 0, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 1 third, 1 third comma negative 1. Okay? These are inverses of each other. Okay? You can see that from the corresponding points. And if we drew in that line y equals x on each of these, you can see that they are indeed reflections across that line y equals x. Okay? So logs and exponentials of the same base are inverses of each other. If they're not the same base, then they're not inverses of each other.
Okay, they can still be useful though. So, <clears throat> again, like I said a second ago, there's no need to graph the exponential function in order to graph the logarithm. You can just think of, hey, what are the key points here? Where would the asymptote be? <clears throat> All that sort of stuff. So we're going to graph each function. We're going to label the key points on the, the graph. We're going to name the function, state the domain, range, and the equation of the asymptote. Okay, not necessarily in that order. So let's just go through and do this problem right here. Let's come up with the points that we're going to graph. Again, negative 1, 0, and 1. Of the six numbers that I need to graph here, to graph those three points, you can fill in four of them without even looking at the graph or without looking at the function. You know it's a logarithm, so you know it's got to look like this. This is going to be the reciprocal of the base, so that's going to be 1 fourth, and that's going to be the same as the base, so that's going to be 4. So I'm going to have 4, 1 right here. I'm going to have z uh, 1, 0. That's right there. And I'm going to have 1 fourth negative 1. So we're about right there. So I'll do 1 fourth comma negative 1. I'd want to draw in the asymptote. Now on this one, it's not a huge deal because it happens to be the same as the uh, y-axis. There's already a line there, so it's pretty tough to screw up the graph on this one. But we went ahead and labeled there's our vertical asymptote. And here's what the graph looks like. Arrows on that end and that end. Labeled the points, got the asymptote, name of this, log base 4, domain and range. Okay, the range is negative infinity to infinity and the domain, 0 to infinity. Okay, now let's stop right here for just a second. Okay, from almost day one in this class, I've said... There are functions that have domain issues. They've got problems. You can't plug in anything you want. The first function was division. What can't you divide by? Can't divide by zero. So if you have a number and you divide it by zero, that's not allowed. Division by zero is not allowed. The next thing we said was, hey, if you've got an even root, you can't take an even root of a negative. That's not allowed. So you can't divide by zero. You can't take an even root of a negative. What problem do logarithms have as far as the domain goes? What can you not plug into a logarithm? Negative or zero. The things that aren't included in the domain are zero and negatives. Okay. So if you ever come across a logarithm, you better make sure you're not plugging in zero or a negative because it doesn't work that way. Okay. Any questions? Sure. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this one right here. Again, let's go about it this way. Let's name this one. What's this called? This is log base 10. What's the domain? It's a parent graph. Nothing weird has happened here. It's going to be 0 to infinity. Okay. What's the range? Negative infinity to infinity. Okay. So all real numbers. It's going to have a vertical asymptote of? x equals 0, right? Now we just need to come up with the points. Got to have six numbers to throw in there. How many do you know automatically, as long as you know it's a logarithm? You know four of them. Negative 1, 0, and 1. That's a 1. This is 1 tenth. This is 10. So I go all the way out here to 10 comma 1. Holy cow, look at this bend. Look how straight that looks, and look what happens here. We bend around like this. Very severe bend on that one right there. It looks like that. Does that look like a logarithm? Does it look like we've got the bend in there? Does it look like the domain would be from 0 to infinity, and the range would be from negative infinity to infinity? This is going to grow very, very slowly. I'll let you think about just how slowly this would grow as we graph this point. 10 comma 1, 1 comma 0, 1 tenth comma negative 1. Okay, let's talk about the next nice point. What's the next nice number that would be log base 10? So in other words, log base 10 of something... Well, the next nice number, the answer would be 2. What would I have to plug in here? 100. Okay? 
you have to go all the way out to 100 before you get up to 2. You have to go out to 1,000 before you get up to 3. Go out to a million and you're only up to 6. Okay? Very slow growing function, but it does continue to grow. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, all right. So let's flip the page over. I think this is the last page here. So if we keep in mind that the important relationship that we've established here is that just like when we learned how to add, you learn how to undo adding by subtracting. You learned how to multiply, then you learn how to divide. You learn how to undo that. Square, square root. Cube, cube root. Okay? Fifth power, fifth root. Those two things would undo each other, and all I'd have would be just this stuff underneath there. As ugly as that expression is, if we keep in mind that those are inverse functions, it makes the problem a heck of a lot easier. So I need you to think about the problems this way. I realize some of you have encountered logarithms before. It's really important that you think about exponentials and logarithms this way because this in the long run is fundamentally what's going on with their relationship. Okay? If I look at an expression like this, okay, I'm going to show you the easy way to do it because you're going to fundamentally understand it. And then I'm going to show you, you know what, it actually works out if we do it using a bunch of other techniques. Longer writing, more work to write down, but it still works. Okay, this function right here has a name. And this function right here has a name. What's that called? That's called log base 5. And by the very fact that this has an exponent on it, this is called exponential base 5. What does log base 5 have to do with exponential base 5? They're inverses of each other. What does that mean they do to each other? That means they cancel each other out. That means the answer to this problem should be 2. Whatever exponential base 5 did to 2, log base 5 should undo it, so I should just get back to 2. This function right here has a name, and so does this one. What's the name of this function? Exponential base 7. What's the name of that function? Log base 7. What does exponential base 7 and log base 7, what do they have to do with each other? They, 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 they cancel each other out. They're, they undo each other. They are inverses. The best way to describe that is they are inverse operations. They undo each other. So whatever log base 7 did to 6, this is going to undo it. And what should the answer be? The answer better be 6. Okay, are there any questions there? Good? It's pretty easy, right? Okay, I need you to watch this. Okay, if you don't want to write this down, you don't have to, but I'd like you to at least understand this. If you understand that those are inverses of each other, this is a very easy problem. If you don't, this is log base 5 of 5 to the second, and let's say we don't know what that is. Let's say this is our question. I'm trying to figure out what that answer is. Okay? Well, this is a logarithmic expression, right? Logarithms are another way to write exponentials. Okay, we wrote log base b of n equals x. That's the base, that's the exponent, that's the number that it equals. So let's do the same thing with this. The base is 5, the exponent is x, and it should equal this number right here. What's the only way those two things can be equal? Yeah, is if x is 2. So did we get the answer right? You bet we did. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. Okay, this is 7 to the log base 7 of 6, and let's say I don't know what that is. It's going to be 6, but let's show that it's 6. Okay, this is an exponential expression. So if I wrote b to the x equals n, I can write log base b of n equals x. The exponent has to be the answer to the logarithm. Well, this right here is the base, this right here is the exponent, and this right here is the number. <coughs> so, let's write log base 7 of x 
equals the exponent. The exponent is log base 7 of 6. What's the only way log base 7 of x can equal log base 7 of 6? Is if x equals 6. So did we get the right answer? You bet we did. Okay. Now, how does that work? It works because logs and exponentials are inverses of each other, and a logarithm is just another way to write exponent an exponential. So if I couldn't figure this out in logarithmic form, I wrote it in exponential form. And look, the x has got to be 2. If I can't figure this out in exponential form, I write it in logarithmic form, and x has got to be 6. Okay, are there any questions there? Now, that's the long way to do it, and that's why it works. It's a lot easier to just know that logs and exponentials of the same base are inverses of each other, right? So, what's the name of this function, and what's the name of this function? Log base A, exponential base A. What do they do to each other? Okay, better way to say it, undo each other. They undo each other, so what's my answer on this problem? Answer on this problem is x. What's the name of this function? And this function, exponential base A, log base A, so my answer is x, whatever it is. As long as the bases are the same, whatever one does, the other one's going to undo it. So let's take a look at these and see if we can figure these out. Don't even have any numbers in this, and yet we're going to figure out what the answer is. It is 1. It's 1 for a couple of reasons. I could put a 1 right there, and this is log base b. This is exponential base b, so the answer better be 1. Or I could think b to what power gives me b? 1. There's the answer. Let's look at this one. Again, this is asking a question. b to what power gives me 1? 0. There's the answer on that one. Can't figure that out. So if I can't figure it out in logarithmic form, what could I do? Write it in exponential form. So that would be b to some question mark equals 0. Now remember, this is the base of a logarithm. It has to be a positive number other than 1. So I've got something that's positive, and it's going to equal a negative. Does that ever happen? It doesn't. No solution. Besides that, is zero in the domain of a logarithm? It is not. Okay? Logarithms have those domain issues. You can't plug in a zero or a negative. So let's take a look at the next one. Eight to what power equals negative eight? Okay, again, same thing, no solution. Okay? You're gonna, not going to take something that's positive, raise it to a power, and suddenly get something that's negative. It doesn't turn out to be zero, and it doesn't turn out to be negative. That's why those are not in the domain. Okay, are there any questions there? Okay, <clears throat> would you fill in that box, please, right there? There are four statements there. All you need is one blank in each one of them. If you know these four things, you really ought to be able to solve any problem involving exponentials and logarithms, at least that you're going to see in this class. Logarithms are just another way to write. Exponential expressions. We'll just write exponentials. The answer to a logarithm is an exponent. If you're having trouble in exponential form, write it in logarithmic form. You can write log form if you want. And if you're having trouble in logarithmic form, write it in exponential form. Okay, now, um, there are four problems left. One of them is similar to a problem that you have on your assignment. Um, my contention is I've been explaining this stuff to you for about, probably about an hour and ten minutes. I shouldn't have to explain how to do this, these problems. You should know how to do these problems. Because the answers are right here in this box. If you've been paying attention, and you truly do understand these four statements right here, I shouldn't have to show you how to solve these. You ought to know how to solve these. 
Okay, don't say anything out loud. Raise your hand if you know what the answer to A is. Good. Okay. If you don't know what the answer to A is and don't know how to solve this, let's think about this for just a second. This is a logarithm. This is a logarithmic expression. If you're staring at this in logarithmic form and you cannot figure out what the answer is, what do you do? Put it in exponential form. But then you've got to remember what goes where. That's the base. The answer to the logarithm is an exponent, and that is the number. So what's the base? What's the exponent? What's the number? So what's the answer? What form is it in? It's in logarithmic form. Now, on this one, let me think. If I thought about it for a while, I could look at that and I could figure out what the answer is just by looking at it. Okay? But that, that takes a fair amount of practice, and you really need to understand what's going on here. If this were a test question, even if I were taking a test and this were a question on the test, I'd still rely on the fact that, you know what? Mm, that looks a little bit weird. It's a logarithm. It's written in log form. I'm not quite sure, so I'm going to translate this and turn it into exponential form. What's the base? What's the exponent? What's the number that it equals? And if I want plain old x, got a couple things to think about here. I want to plain, turn that into a plain old x or like an x to the first. So hopefully you know what to do here. If not, Hopefully you remember that this is literally what that translates to. A rational exponent is a root. This happens to be the square root. So how would I get x by itself? Square it. Okay, and I can do that here or down below. In any case, I end up with x equals 64. And if I put a 64 here, does that actually work? Is 64 to the 1 half power, is it equal to 8? Is the square root of 64 8? It is, so that's the right way to do it. Okay. And how about this one? And th this one, of all of them, I mean, maybe this is the toughest because whether it's in logarithmic form or exponential form, you're still left answering the same type of question. 3 to what power equals 81? And then you just have to stop and think, all right, well, 3 to the first is 3. 3 to the second is 9. 3 to the third is 27. 3 to the fourth 81. is 81. So my answer on this problem is... Four. Now, if I change this problem, so this isn't the problem, but if I change this to an 80, then I'm stuck. I'm then stuck. I need to use a calculator in order to figure this out, and we'll give you some tools for working with that next time. Okay, are there any questions there? You could estimate what it is. Approximately, what would the answer be? Just a tiny bit under 4, 3.9, 3.95, 3.99, something like that. Just a tad less than 4. Good there? Okay, so take a look at the last one. I think this is on your assignment. Um, this would be a great final exam question because it checks to see whether or not you know how logarithms work, and it also makes you remember... Holy cow, how do rational exponents work? How can I do that? It's in logarithmic form, so I'm going to write 32 to the 2 fifths equals x. Well, I've got the x by itself, but if I wanted an actual number for this, I've got to think a little bit harder. Um, what does this mean? Okay, that is the fifth root, and that is the exponent. 
So we're going to do the fifth root, oops, fifth root of 32. And then I can either square it inside or square it outside. Which one's generally better? Generally better outside because then you can find the root of a smaller number. What is the fifth root of 32? 2 squared. So x on this one is 4. There's the answer. Okay. Any questions? Sure?